Hello, welcome to another episode of Stories of World War II Veterans. My name is Kayleen Reeser. Each week I'm reading to you a story from one of the four books I have written of World War II stories. These are based on my interviews with 260 World War II veterans. Today's story comes from number two in my World War II Legacies series. It's called They Did It for Honor, Stories of American World War II Veterans. All right, so today's story is about Virgil Bixler, who served in the Army. I saw soldiers freeze to death, said Virgil Bixler of Decatur, Indiana. In December 1944, he was fighting with the 80th Infantry Division, 905th Field Artillery in the Battle of Bastogne. We slept in foxholes and used leaves for mattresses, he said. One soldier near me didn't like his foxhole and crawled out to another. Right away, the first one was demolished by a shell. Born in 1920, Bixler attended school until the eighth grade when he quit to work on the family farm near Geneva, Indiana. He was married by the time he was drafted in February of 1942. Bixler participated in basic training at Camp Forest in Tennessee. We crawled under barbed wire and stayed away from the 30 caliber machine guns firing live ammunition, he said. In Arizona, Bixler participated in desert training in hot sandstorms. Garnett, his wife, followed him as he was transferred around the country. The military released me from duties each night so we could stay together, he said. In spring of 1944, the couple was finally separated when Bixler and 3,500 other troops boarded the Queen Mary, a converted troop ship, at Camp Kilmer in New Jersey. Garnett returned to their home in Indiana, expecting the couple's first child. It was a challenge for Virgil Bixler to leave his pregnant wife to fight the war, but he was resolved. I was trained and ready to go, he said. The ship sailed to Glasgow, Scotland. After being restocked with supplies, it crossed the English Channel in mid-June to land near a beach in Normandy. The first troops had already landed on D-Day, but fighting continued as Bixler and thousands of other soldiers advanced on the Germans, firing 30 caliber carbine guns. It was very loud with all of the sh shooting, he said. I came close to being injured, but we didn't lose anyone. In fall 1944, Bixler was transferred to the 105th Field Artillery. That winter, during the advancement through Belgium, France, and Germany, troops endured two months of record cold temperatures during one of Germany's worst winters. Adolf Hitler's attempt to divide Allied forces through Belgium by pushing his troops through became known as the Battle of the Bulge. Despite bitter cold, Allied forces remained vig vigilant. We scattered around to shoot so the Germans would think we had a bigger force, said Bixler. One night, German planes fired four 50 caliber machine guns at troops on the ground. The sky was lit up with bullets, he said. We had protection from our Allied fighter planes, the P-47s and P-51s. Similar assistance arrived at Bastogne when heavy cloud cover lifted and pilots from the Army Air Corps could provide cover. A bright spot occurred for Bixler when he received a letter from home that his wife had delivered a son. The couple had agreed to name him Roger. I kept my newborn son's photograph close to me always, said Bixler. As the Battle of the Bulge ended in February of 1945 with an Allied victory, Bixler was part of a group that achieved another significant uh, happening. We managed to capture a huge gun nicknamed Big Bertha, he said. Though the gun had been kept hidden in a mountain under armed guard, Allied forces had discovered it and seized it. The Germans fired it at night from seven miles away, he added. It required two railroad cars for transport. Another time, Bixler helped Allied troops capture 5,000 German soldiers, including several top-ranking officials. They were part of the SS Special Service Troops, he said. On still another occasion, Bixler was with a group of Allied soldiers that seized 29 train cars of benzene, 
also known as mustard gas. We knew the Germans would try to recapture it, so we moved out quickly, he said. We took down the train track from behind us, using a buzz saw to cut the ties. The most shocking event of the war occurred when Bixler and Allied troops helped liberate German death camps. Star starved bodies lay frozen and piled up everywhere, he said. It was horrible. In May of 1945, Corporal Bixler was in Munich when he heard that the war had ended. He was discharged in October 1945 and returned home to work at Central Soya Indicator, today called Bungie. He and Garnet became parents to two more children. I felt scared many times as a soldier, he said, but I always felt God would protect me, and he did. This is a picture, it's not a real clear one, hope you can see it, of Virgil Bixler, who served in the Army. Again, today's story comes from my book, They Did It For Honor, Stories of American World War II Veterans, and this is book two in my World War II Legacy series. Thanks for listening. I hope that you learned something today and learned to appreciate what our vets have done for us and sacrifice. Please tell a vet thank you. If you like this channel, subscribe, leave a comment, ring the bell, tell another friend, and maybe you'd want to go to Amazon and purchase the book for yourself or for a loved one or friend. They are all uh, large print, by the way. So I'll see you next week, and remember to thank everyone for your freedoms.